Welcome to another lively edition of the Deadly Experiment, all of you out there, boys and girls, men and women, parents, grandparents, grandchildren, children of all ages. And I know there are many of you out there who maybe will not admit to it, but you do watch our program uh, quite a bit because of the feedback that we do get um, from people on the streets that we meet and from people who may email us as well. We do not have a website. We do not use uh, any kind of Facebook, although I have Facebook. I will not fall into the trap that is being laid before us by the Zuckerbergs or the Zuckermans or the Adelsons or any of the other of that particular kinsmanship that are ruling over America, Israel today, ladies and gentlemen. It's a trap that many have fallen into, and as you can see now, with Facebook coming under attack for greater censorship and scrutiny for views points that are not quite kosher or approved by the politically correct media in this country, that is a crime in and of itself. The politically correct media. Well, in the scriptures, we're told that Satan Lucifer, Lucifer means the illuminated one, you know, he pretends to be like Christ, the light of the world. Lucifer, Satan, is the prince of the power of the air. That's right. He rules over us. Mentally, spiritually, uh, in terms of economics, the four hidden dynasties that I've referred to you on this program, political, academic, which means the media and includes colleges and universities and all of these other, you know, adjuncts thereof, as well as the economic. And most of all, the fourth hidden dynasty that the prophet spoke of, particularly Zechariah in 14 verses 2 onward is the religious community. The religious community today, as never before, is coming together from the Vatican to Protestantism to Hinduism and, yes, even the Muslim people who have been demonized following the alleged Muslim attack on America 2001. Friends, they're calling for a unity. They're calling for a day, a year of prayer and love and brotherhood. Isn't that interesting? The very people orchestrating all of these events, as we saw on the previous show with James Fetzer about Charlottesville, North Carolina, a psyop to be sure, that the very people who want us to hate to hate the Muslims, to hate the patriots, to hate the white nationalists, to hate the Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan, to hate all of them, are the same ones that are calling for love. They're calling for togetherness. Isn't that interesting? It was like during the World War I era when America was thrust into its first entree overseas in Europe after, after the voices of reason were saying that Wilson and the Wilson administration were taking us into another disastrous war, this time worldwide, as it turned out to be even more so in the horrific days of World War II, a blood sacrifice of our people to be sure. Friends, it was a harbinger of the worst things to come. And yet, voices of reason were saying, stay out of foreign aggression, stay out of world meddling. But they were shouted down and called racist. They were called Nazis. They were called bigots. They were called super patriots by the demagogic politicians like Jack Reed of that time. Well, there were voices of reason. Senator Hiram Johnson was one of them. Martin Dyes, who was the chairman of a committee in the House of Representatives from Texas, who was demonized by the Roosevelt administration because he opposed the uh, fifth column of the Nazis and the fifth column of the communists, saying we don't want to get involved in either fight. Let them fight amongst themselves and stay out of these wars of aggression. Voices of reason, like Charles Lindbergh, who said America must stay out of war, because if we get into World War II on the side of Stalin, then we will see a new tyranny as never before the communist hammer and sickle flying over nation after nation and people being liquidated by the tens of millions. And didn't that come true? Isn't that what happened? Or are you believing the revisionists of Hollywood, the historical revisionists who completely reinvent history? to make the so-called allied forces in Europe look like the, quote, good guys in the, quote, good war. 
And yet, more were killed because of the Allies' aggression and alliance with Stalin, who was a mass murderer, that Roosevelt recognized in 1933, the official recognition of Stalinist Russia. Even Herbert Hoover and previous presidents could not do that. They said we shouldn't do it. Roosevelt, who said himself, some of my best friends are communists, he said. Best friends! He then warned, he says, nothing happens in politics by accident. If it happens, you can be sure it was planned that way. And by golly, I believed him on that. I didn't believe him in anything else. In war or in economic socialism that was begun in America in 1933 and 34. But I did believe him when he said that. For once he told the truth. It's like the Jewish scribes and Pharisees, the Kenites, the sons of Cain, when they had consummated the murder of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, they said, let his blood, if he is an innocent man and we've shed innocent blood, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. And as uh, many have noted, uh, that was probably one of the more, if only honest things they ever had to say. Well. Today we'll talk about the media and the role of government and media as one. We do not have an independent national media in this country any longer, America. Are you listening? We do not have an independent, competitive, honest media in America any longer. We haven't had one for many years. The author, newspaper man, Gary Garrett, you know, he wrote in his book, and, and, and he, he wrote many columns in newspapers, so did H.L. Mencken, about this mentality of corruption in the media. Because particularly in World War II, the Office of Strategic Services, which was the forerunner of the CIA in America, was actually working hand in glove with all of these powerful media moguls the Frank Weisners or Wisners, as a matter of fact, the William S. Paley's of CBS and others as well. Uh, Fred Friendly up in this area of the country from Massachusetts, Edward R. Morrow. People like that were actually distorting and perverting what used to be called news in the early part of the 20th century. They were inventing news. They were advocacy journalists, as many have called them over the years. That means uh, agitation with propaganda mixed in with news. So you have some facts, and then you have non-facts, and then you have lies, and then you have more lies, and then in the end, guess what? You're set up for a lie. Isn't that what's been happening to America from this hoax and the PSYOP in Charlottesville, Virginia? Violence on both sides, those terrible KKK men. Because if you're white, you automatically are cast as a white nationalist now, and that by the media. Yes, that means you are a demon. That means all of the world's problems from day one can be laid at your doorstep. As one man used to say here in Rhode Island, he used to say, I'm tired of wearing a target on my back with a bullseye in it because I'm white. Now, that's not to say that whites have always been good people who have always done nice things. No, they haven't. Nobody has. But the white people of the Bible, the Adamic, Adamic means to show blood in the cheeks, ruddy complexion. Then we went from Adam and we saw what happened, why Noah was fair in his race. It meant that he was of white complexion that Noah showed blood in the cheeks. We went from Noah and then we continued downward and we saw the, the lineage from Adam Noah. And of course we saw uh, that Cain had been murdered and before Noah ever came about. And Cain, uh, Cain was the murderer of his brother Abel rather. Abel was murdered. So Abel had no seed line after Cain. That was it. The next of Adam's sons would be Seth. 130 years later would be born Seth. That begat the other, you know, lineage which you find in Genesis chapter 5, the lineage of Adam. Genesis 4, you find the lineage of Cain. Nowhere do you find Cain's seed line and Adam's seed line as the same seed line, which means those who kill Jesus, the synagogue of Satan, hate the word of God. 
They despise God's word. Now, how can I prove that? Very simply. Every time prayer and Bible reading has come up in schools, the name of Jesus Christ being revered in school, who has come out in the forefront? Well, we know the, uh, the Kenite-led American Civil Liberties Union has, the National Lawyers Guild has, the Zionist Organization of America, the American Jewish Federation, the American Jewish Council, and we've had these other organizations, the NCC. CJ, National Council of Christians and Jews, coming together for what? Brotherhood. Take Christ out. Take God out of our life, the Christ of the Bible, and look what we have begun. We showed you on previous shows that when you don't obey God's word from the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, you are going to experience curses like you've never seen. And our land today is all but destroyed. The new civil war is indeed in effect today. You know what the name of it is, folks? Let me see if you know your history. Bolshevik Revolution. The Bolshevik Revolution that took down the Kerensky regime in Russia in 1917, organized against it by uniting and creating different factions against the government. Now we have Trump. He is the perfect storm. He and all of his handlers, who just happen to be mostly from the same Goldman Sachs companies and the same synagogue of Satan's economic council, political hardliners, the Josh Bolton's people who are neocons running the show. And he looks like a dunce with a, with a dunce cap on, doesn't know what happened to him. He is being used and manipulated just as Nixon was before Watergate, and uh, Jimmy Carter was used for one term four years. Let me tell you, friends, if you think you're a free country, you'd better think again. You are not a free nation. You are under the dominance of Cain and his seed line in America today, and the proof is in the pudding. War is in America's streets now, as it was in Bolshevik Russia in 1917 and 18. 100-year anniversary of Bolshevism to unite the various factions against the incumbent government to fight each other in the streets and bring about the overthrow of the system. That's what Steve Bannon was basically born into with his worship of Mr. Alexander Dugin. Dugin in Russia predicted what would happen in America decades before it happens right now. <laughs> so how did it all happen? The media are the key to corrupting the mind, controlling your mind. That's why Americans now polled say they have less respect than ever before for the media, for the Dan Ratners and the lying Lesters and the lying Bryans. And no wonder. Americans may be dumb, but they're not that dumb. All right? I didn't say they were dumb. God said in his word, my people are a little bit sottish, meaning stupid. They'll fall for every trick that comes down the pike. As long as the government says it's true and the media swear to it, they'll fall right into line. Right now, we'll show you by one of my associates and friends, James Corbett, being interviewed and uh, talking about these all of these corrupt media practices, relationships to the CIA and the Central Intelligence Agency's connection to the Mossad in Israel. Then Brother Nathaniel comes back and talks about the emerging world order under Trump. Right now, let's get to our video presentation, folks. Welcome. This is James Corbett of The Corbett Report with your eye-opener report for BoilingFrogsPost.com. The old adage that knowledge is power has been apparent to warriors and would-be rulers throughout history. A well-known illustration from the annals of history revolves around Nathan Rothschild, the British representative of Mayor Amschel's infamous Rothschild banking dynasty. At the Battle of Waterloo, Rothschild's riders and messengers were able to get news of Napoleon's defeat home to Nathan a full day in advance of the government's own news carriers. As the story goes, Nathan was able to convince the public that he had in fact received news of Wellington's defeat by selling heavily on the English stock market. When panic selling ensued, Rothschild had his agents buying up the stocks at pennies on the pound. By the time the news of Napoleon's defeat reached Britain's shores, Rothschild had already secured his position as one of the richest men in Britain, a fortune that was only further leveraged in the ensuing years, lending post-war stabilization funds to Europe's monarchies. Regardless of the story's historical veracity, it serves to illustrate the fundamental precept Knowledge is indeed power. 
It also suggests a corollary. Misinformation is a way of leveraging one's power over an enemy. This too is an ancient idea that has been used throughout the centuries as a tool of psychological warfare to confer one's army an advantage over its enemies. Military deception is an ancient and time-honored art. Throughout recorded history, military commanders have attempted to spread false news and seed false information as part of psychological warfare operations to deceive, confuse, and demoralize the enemy. During the Crusades in 1271, Sultan Baybars successfully took the Crusaders' Crack de Chevalier in Syria by conveying a letter to the Knights' garrison there, telling them to surrender. The letter, supposedly from the head of their order in Jerusalem, was in fact a crude forgery, but the gambit worked. The Knights capitulated, and the Sultan took the castle. However, it wasn't until the invention and widespread use of technologies like the printing press and then the radio and the television that the modern conception of news was formulated. The broadsheet, the magazine, and the newspaper started to give people a sense of a regularly published digest of news stories. These technologies also enabled the possibility of mechanizing false news to spread propaganda to the enemy. Some of the most dramatic examples of this came in the 20th century, with the use of airplanes to spread propaganda leaflets. In the Napoleonic Wars, from ships standing off the French coast, the British launched kites bearing anti-morale leaflets. The employment of military aircraft in World War I made possible the wide dissemination of propaganda leaflets. The leaflet confronts the enemy soldier with a tangible propaganda message which he can keep and refer to. Leaflets also may be distributed by tactical, strategic and liaison aircraft. This surrender leaflet was used against the enemy in North Korea and the use of radio to direct transmissions across enemy lines in the hope of swaying public opinion. In support of strategic operation, radio may be highly effective, limited only by the range of the transmitter and the availability of radio receivers. Psychological warfare broadcasts are flexible and can be altered swiftly to fit a changing situation. This was by no means limited to psyops against the enemy, though. The very same techniques have been used throughout history to fool one's own troops in an effort to raise morale. In the Civil War, false news was routinely distributed to Confederate soldiers to boost their spirits before a battle, from false reports of Union General Ulysses S. Grant's death to rumors that a world war was about to break out, with England and France siding with the Confederates. In World War II, false news of reinforcements for the beleaguered American Filipino garrison resisting the Japanese invasion of the Philippines kept them fighting long past the point of their impending defeat. One of the most extreme examples of false information spread to confuse, panic, or disarm a nation, however, are news stories that are completely made up from whole cloth and broadcast as if they are real. These stories too, although more rare, can be devastatingly effective in confusing and demoralizing enemies, or panicking the public. The pedigree of fake news stories goes back some time, but perhaps the most famous was the Halloween 1938 edition of the weekly radio drama Mercury Theatre on the Air. This adaptation of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds was presented as a fake news broadcast of an alien invasion. Famously, Many of the people listening did not realize that the transmission was fake and assumed the nation was actually being invaded. Some believed aliens had actually landed, others assumed it was a Nazi ploy as tensions swelled in the run-up to World War II. Although commonly dismissed as a sensationalistic media hoax, the phenomenon provoked by the broadcast became the subject of intense academic research. One of the bodies that took special interest in the broadcast was the Princeton Radio Project, a Rockefeller Foundation-funded body researching the effect of radio in influencing public opinion. Closely connected to organs of the U.S. Psychological Warfare Program, the group, which included Nelson Rockefeller's Dartmouth College roommate, Hadley Cantrell, eventually published a study on the public reaction to War of the Worlds. Since that time, fake news broadcasts have been aired on otherwise mainstream networks from time to time, often with little or no notice that the news story being aired is completely fictitious. By way of Reuters, 
Fake report of Russian tanks sparks panic in the country of Georgia. Panic gripped Georgia on Saturday night when a pro-government television station broadcast a fake news report that Russian tanks had entered the capital and President Mikhail Saakashvili had been killed. Imedi TV, and that's I-M-E-D-I, Imedi TV introduced the report as an imitation of possible events, but the warning was lost on many viewers as mobile phone networks crashed and residents of Tbilisi rushed into the streets. The report thrust the ex-Soviet neighbors back to August 2008, or 888, when Russia crushed an assault by U.S. ally Georgia on the rebel region of South Ossetia in the five-day war and sent tanks within 28 miles of Tbilisi. I've included, of course, the flashback link on Media Monarchy to August of 2008 with a more pertinent headline, U.S. attacks Russia through client state Georgia. We don't have time to really get into that, but this story I find really important and is something that I've gone into on Media Monarchy on the radio show a bit. When it concerns these sort of war of the worlds type psyop events and one of the CNN clips that's that's included in the documentation on this on this posting references Orson Welles in War of the Worlds. You can also think of Wag the Dog. But any sort of media event that is fake, that is created, that is meant to manipulate the masses. James, you and I were talking off mic just before we started this recording about, on the one hand, I sometimes assume now that with more media, that people are more media literate. But unfortunately, I don't think that's the case. And I worry that we're ripe for the pickings from some kind of fake PSYOP War of the Worlds event. Sometimes the fake news is deliberately seeded into the public consciousness by way of a carefully coordinated public relations campaign. Tonight, it was the most shocking atrocity story about Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. They took the babies out of the incubators. They took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. But was it true? Two weeks after the liberation, it became apparent that the story was a complete hoax. Lyndon McIntyre exposes the big lie of the Gulf crisis and the massive public relations campaign that whipped up war fever in the United States. Can't really say Trump's to blame. After all, he's just a pawn in their game. He himself warned us of a global power structure that imposes its own agenda over America's. It's a global power structure that is responsible for the economic decisions that have robbed our working class, stripped our country of its wealth, and put that money into the pockets of a handful of large corporations and political entities. Power begins with money, and money begins and ends with Jewish bankers. That means borrowing from them, whether you're a nation, a corporation or a shopper with a credit card and paying them back at interest. There's nothing secret about it anymore. The Clinton machine is at the center of this power structure. We've seen this firsthand in the WikiLeaks documents in which Hillary Clinton meets in secret with international banks to plot the destruction of U.S. sovereignty in order to enrich these global financial powers, her special interest friends, and her donors. Here's Hillary with one of her special interest friends, Gary Cohn of Goldman Sachs, a major player of the global power structure. Kind of chummy, don't you think? Cohn's chummy with Jared Kushner, too. Trump's special advisor for all things that's none of your business. For when at the Wailing Wall with Yarmulkes on their Yiddish or Kups, their kinship passed a silent message between them which said, Jews first, Goys second, or not at all. That's political power with tribalism at its core. And we got trouble right here in River City, and it rhymes with the borrower is slave to the lender. The central base of world political power is right here in America, and it is our corrupt political establishment that is the greatest power behind the efforts at radical globalization and the disenfranchisement of working people. If the center of globalization is right here in America, 
Why did Trump pick Cohn as his economic advisor and now fast-tracking him to head the Fed in 2018? It's an emerging world order that will turn nations into corporate fiefdoms controlled by Jewish bankers. The issue of capitalism versus communism was a fight over who owns man's labor. But it's really two sides of the same coin. If it's the state, Jewish central banking has been funding it for 200 years. If the private sector, Jewish finance capital has been funding that too. Their financial resources are virtually unlimited. Their political resources are unlimited. Their media resources are unmatched. And most importantly, the depths of their immorality is absolutely unlimited. And now with robots replacing the worker, a universal technocratic welfare state will further enslave the masses to the Jewish whip. A kinder and gentler whip where video games, smartphones, and virtual reality will keep the goyim pacified in poverty. But it's a cunning whip that flogs even a president into submission. And with it, a belief system arises, a pseudo-Calvinistic worship of capitalism where a businessman president plays right into the Jewish banker's hands. I have been rich and I have been poor, said Sophie Tucker. Rich is better, she pronounced. In Trump's emerging world order, only the Jews get richer. Well, now I hope you've all witnessed what we told you for years on these programs and on radio in Rhode Island and nationally, internationally, folks, is that God's word is coming alive. When he says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and lack of truth because they don't worship him in Hosea, he meant it. We are being destroyed. As I quoted to you from Deuteronomy and Leviticus chapter 26, when you do not obey him and worship these foreign gods and traverse across the world to, to wage a war of aggression in the name of liberation, you will receive the curses. And the curses are here today, but you haven't seen anything yet. We're going to see turmoil, statutes being vandalized as they have been by the radical Bolshevik left, disguising itself as the voice of tolerance. We're going to see murals cut in two, shredded, fires burning. We're going to see bombs going off. Friends, God is speaking to us in the heavens and also on the earth. Earthquakes in diverse places, right out of Matthew 24. I hope you can understand now, those of you that have eyes to see and ears to hear the word of God, that we are in the last days, friends, the very last day. 2018 represents, represents the 70th year of the evil fig tree planted in Jerusalem in 1948. The generation Jesus denounced and said to learn that parable of the evil fig. For when the roots spread and the branches which will be filled with dead leaves, no life in them, he said, then wait for what? The abomination of the desolator. Not the desolation, improperly translated, but the desolator, meaning Satan himself, coming back to save the world and just create love and kissy, kissy, warm and fuzzy relationships across the globe. Don't fall for it. Be sealed in the mind with the seal of God. That's the seventh seal. And be prepared for the seventh vial. And the seventh trump is when Christ returns. Thank you all. Goodbye. And Yahweh bless his elect. <laughs>